So let's try an example. This is once you get used to doing a couple of these, they really aren't that difficult. It's just a matter of setting up the equations and turning the crank. Okay. Let's try another example. So you have a battery connected to two thick wires and a thin wire. And uh, the thick wire has area A1 and the length L1. Two, there's two of them. Okay, A1, L1, A1, L1. And then the thin wire has area A2 and length L2. So the basic strategy is start with by writing down the node rule. Start by writing and then write down the loop rule. In other words, current conservation and what is what amounts to energy conservation. And then see if you can solve the system for any unknowns that you're looking for. Let's start with the node rule. Okay, you all should know this by now. How do we compare the current, the electron current in the thick wire to the electron current in the thin wire? Okay, all right, well, this should be 100% by now, folks, okay? This, is, this isn't that, that difficult. We've been harping on this for quite a while. So if you don't know this, uh, you're going to have to, okay? You're going to have to know it for the test coming up in a week. So, so be sure you understand this. The current... Through that in the steady state, the number of electrons per unit time that go past a point in the circuit, it's got to be the same going in as the same going out. So, you know, here's a node, right? A junction between uh, one wire and another. The current going, and which, by the way, which way is the electron current going? It's, yeah, that way, right? Electron current's going that way. Conventional current's going the other way, all right? So, but whichever. Electron current's going this way, so here's I1 and here's I2. And in the steady state, we've got to have the same number going in as going out per second, so I1 is equal to I2. So that can tell us something about the relationship between the electric field in the thick wire and the electric field in the thin wire. We have N1, A1, U1, E1 is equal to N2, A2, U2, E2, just substituting in the relationship between current and electric field into that equation. Uh, N is the electron density. Is that the same for these? If they're, if they're the same material? Yeah, that should be the same. Okay, so N1 and N2 is the same. Same material used should be the same, right? Mobility should be the same. So that this tells us that A1, E1 is equal to A2, E2. Which means already we know that the electric field in the thick wire is bigger or smaller. Should be smaller, right? So we have a small electric field uh, pointing what direction? At this location, E is pointing up. Yep. So that's E1. That's E1. And in here, that's E2. Okay. E2 is going to be larger because we have a smaller area. Okay, that's the node rule. That's all we can. That's as far as we can go at this point. Uh, okay, so energy conservation, or in other words, round trip potential difference being equal to zero. See if you can figure this out. See if you can figure this out. We know the EMF of the battery. The EMF is again the work done per unit charge, some some positive number. Okay, and it's numerically equal to the potential difference across the battery. So, th so draw a path, think about a path that goes round trip through the circuit. See if you can write out in terms of the electric field in the thick wire, the electric field in the thin wire, and the EMF, an equation that comes from the loop rule, round trip potential difference being equal to zero. I would suggest actually drawing the circuit and then drawing the path you want to choose through the circuit and drawing the field directions along that path because we know that that determines the signs, right, of those potential differences. Okay, so we're converging toward an answer here. 76% of us say answer number three, which is correct. So good job. So how do we determine this? Well, again, you should draw the electric. First of all, pick a path. I, it's up to you. You could go clockwise or you can go counterclockwise. It doesn't matter. The, the relative signs will come out to be the same. You'll get the same equation. I like to go in the direction of the electric field and the wire. It just makes a little bit more sense to me. 
So I'm going to go that way. Okay, that's going to be the direction of my my path. Okay. And in the steady state, I know that again the electric field is always pointing in a direction parallel to my path. So that's E1, and then that's E1, and so forth. And so I would have, well, let's, let me just write it out. We have delta V is equal, round trip equal to zero. And so I'm going to have a delta V in wire one plus a delta V wire two plus a delta V in the second wire one, which I'll just label that wire one. It turns out to be the same, plus a delta V in the battery is equal to zero, okay? So I'm going in the, let's start with wire, this first wire one. I'm going in the direction of the electric field, and so will that give me a positive or a negative? Delta V will be negative, right? So the delta V across, basically from this point to this point, going in that direction, gives me a negative. And the field is, so I would have you know, a negative, and I'm, again, we're taking an integral here, but that electric field is uniform, so it can come out of the integral. So it's really just looking at the electric field times that distance. And so we have the magnitude of E1 times that distance, which we call L1, okay? And then I go across the thin wire, and I'm going in the direction of the electric field. So that's going to give me negative. Okay, negative magnitude of E2, and I'm getting tired of writing that magnitude sign, so I'll just write them E1 and E2. So E1 without any symbols on it just means a magnitude. E2 without any symbols on it just means a magnitude. E2, L2, okay? And then I have another length of wire 1. I'm going in the direction of the electric field, so the difference is, again, positive or negative. Negative, same electric field magnitude as before E1, and same length, L1. And again, they're in the same direction. Cosine of 0 gives me z or zero, uh, 1. So it's just the field times that direction. And then if I go across the battery, again, the electric field inside the battery is in that direction. So I'm going in the opposite direction of the electric field. So I should get a potential difference that is positive. And then we say this delta V across the battery is just numerically equal to what we call the EMF. Okay? And then I'm back to where I started from, so I set the thing equal to zero. And I have two terms here that are alike. So when I rewrite this, I have EMF minus 2E1L1 minus E2L2 is equal to zero. Okay? So now what do we have? We have, well, first of all, questions. Are we okay with this? Okay. Again, watch the signs. Okay, you, you've got to have, uh, you could have gone the other direction, right? I could have gone uh, in the direction of the electric field in the, of the battery and in the opposite direction of the fields in the wire. That would have given me a negative EMF and a positive E1L1 and a positive E2L2. So all I'm just doing is multiplying both sides of the equation by a negative sign, and that doesn't change anything. The other side is zero, so that doesn't change anything. So either way, it doesn't matter. Okay? Uh, can't say one or two because you have two different electric fields inside those wires. Okay? E1 is different from E2 in the second length, so it's not the same field, so you've got to be careful about that. Okay, let's try calculating something. We have um, two equations. I don't know the electric field E1. I don't know the electric field E2. So they're my unknowns. And I have two equations and two unknowns. So this is a system we could solve. If we give the battery EMF is say, one, one and a half volts, uh, the electron density, this is kind of a typical electron density for a metal, 9 times 10 to the 28th electrons per meter cubed. This is the mobility of a Typical metal might be even be for copper or something like that. Uh, U is 7 times 10 to the minus 5 meters per second divided by volts per meter. We'll say length 1 is 0.2 meters, length 2 is 0.05 meters. Cross-sectional area 1 is 9 times 10 to the minus 8 
cross section of area 2 is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8. Take a couple minutes, see if you can work out the magnitude of electric field E2, the field in the thin wire. If you're still working, that's okay. Let's let's see if we can try to set this up. We have um, we want to find E2, right? So I'm going to take this. I'm just going to do a substitution. I'm just going to take this equation, solve for E1, so it gives me A2 over A1 times E2, and then I'm just going to plug the result into equation number two, right? So I'm going to have the EMF minus 2 times this result, A2 over A1 times E2, all times L1 minus E2, L2, and that's equal to zero. Uh, I'm going to factor out E2 as the common term here. So I have a minus E2. I actually factor out a negative sign as well. So I have 2A2 over A1 times L1 plus L2 equal to zero. And then I can bring the EMF to the other side of the equation, and then that becomes this becomes positive, and that's that equal to EMF, right? And then I can solve. I can say E2 is equal to the EMF over 2A2 over A1, L1 plus L2. And finally, I have 1.5 volts over 2 times the area 2 is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8, and area number 1 was what, 9? Yeah, 9 times 10 to the minus 8. And L1 was, uh, how long was wire 1? 0.2 meters. And then plus, what was L2? 0 0.05? 0 0.05? Okay. okay. So what, so what do you get? What do you do when you get all, do all this? What do you get? You get 12.6? Point 0.1166? 12.6? Okay. Double check the arithmetic, right? Okay. We need to figure out a lot of things that you need to take into account here. Don't forget parentheses when you're doing, you know, oftentimes when you're doing these long calculations on a calculator, Break it up into steps, find this part first, then add that part, then invert it, find it, then calculate that one. Okay, we'll pick this up next time.